Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome back to the Mixing in a Home Music Studio course. In this video, we're going to talk about bouncing out. So firstly, if you are new to my channel, new to my videos, and you like what you see, click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. So bouncing out. So let's assume you've, you've done, you've finished your mix, you've gone through all the techniques, everything's done, you're ready to finish this off. So you're gonna to wanna to bounce it out. Now, generally from here, I would be sending the song off to a mastering engineer or you might be mastering it yourself. So you might bounce it out. And you may keep it in the same software. It depends on your workflow and how you do it. In my case here, I will bounce it out to using another piece of software or in the same piece of software, but just in a new project. So I keep my mastering process uh, clear and simple. So the bouncing out process there is going to be that I'm going to want a high quality output and you know, it's going to be like a lossless format. So I'm going to go to say a WAV file, uh, 24 bit still. I'm not going to go down to 16 bit at this stage and that's going to go off to be mastered to to do the final bit of polish and the final bit out okay so the other thing is is that if you are working on client songs or you want to be able to play this song out without going to mastering straight away or whatever else you just want to be able to listen to it yourself then you might want to output say an mp3 or something like that to play on various sources or to as i said give to the client to refer, listen to and give their thoughts and opinions on that. So I'll still do it as a fairly high quality MP3, maybe 320K or an AAC file, 192, 256, something like that. Um, but what will generally happen is because I usually mix at a lot lower levels than mastering, if I'm working for a client, I may get complaints of, oh, it's not loud enough, you need to make it louder. So to try and avoid those uh, comments because the song's not mastered yet. Quite often what I'll do is I'll just throw on a limiter at the end on my main mix bus just to boost that volume up. I may, uh, I'll turn on uh, the dither control there. Very simple. I won't really go into detail on the settings there. We'll talk about more of that uh, in the mastering course when and if that gets created. Um, but I'll do that and I'll bounce it out, you know, 16 bit. Uh, it'll be an mp3 or something like that, but I will basically put, you know, I will put a limiter on it, right? So I'll boost the volume to do a, let's call it a pseudo mastering, right? It's not mastering, but we're just basically taking the volume so that it is loud. So we don't get that complaint from the client because that's a not very helpful uh comment because you want them to just analyze the song and listen to it and say, do they like it? I don't really want to hear that it's not loud enough because yeah, I know it's not mastered yet. So I try to avoid that by basically turning the volume up so it is really loud just for that reference so they can listen to it and give me uh, some feedback without talking about it's not loud enough. Now that can also be useful for yourself if you're at a stage where you're not ready for mastering yet, but you want to still play it to family, friends, or whatever else, you may just want to get that volume up so that it is easily played on lots of locations. But otherwise, I'm just going to get it ready for uh, bouncing out and, you know, giving it to a mastering engineer or mastering myself. So uh, let's get into Cubase and I'll show you the bouncing out process. Pretty simple, but just in case you haven't seen it before or done it before, I'll show you how it's done and uh, we can then close this off. Okay, so here we are in Cubase and we've basically got a project open here. It's fully mixed. We're ready to go. So I'm going to bounce this out and or, or show you how you bounce it out. And um, there's a hotkey to do it, which is F12. But the other way is uh, just to go up here. And basically what we want to do is export audio mix down and it's going to pop, pop open this window here so we've got lots of options in here where we could break it out to multiple tracks so if you do things like stems or that sort of thing which i don't 
cover in this course because we're trying to keep things fairly basic. So we'll assume we're not doing that, but you could go into multiple here, single, however you want to do it. So we're going to go for default. This, this layout has got more complicated over time, uh, depending on what version of Cubase you've got. This is, I think, Cubase 11. So it looks a lot different to what it did before. But uh, what we can do is we can also set uh, what we're going to output. So it's pretty critical that you have the entire song selected. All right, so I have uh, a thing up the top here that is actually selecting the whole lot. So that'll go from the start of the song to the end of the song. So again, I'll hit F12 to pop this open. And then we just do some simple things, okay? So I'll give it a name. Now it does automatically come up defaulting, I think, with your project name, but you can um, obviously give it any name you like. We're gonna pick a path, so where we want it to go to, what, what location on our hard drive. And it's now giving you a preview and you know conflicts. Some of these settings I do not change at all. So here's an important part here. So we've got some presets, which there is no preset saved. Uh, I just don't bother to say presets, but you can say presets if you have a few defined ones. We, you can pick your output here. So in the case here, I'm picking the Focal monitors. So this is basically my main output. Every one of these is going there, but if you wanted to pick the mix bus, because you know, maybe that's technically your main output, then you can pick that. But I pick the Focal monitors because it goes through the mix bus, but then it goes out to my monitors from there. So there's no other processing on the monitors. So I, it's just as easy for me to just pick that. No big deal otherwise, but you know, you can pick individual tracks, individual buses to output instead if you want to. Uh, you can have markers and locators here to say what range you want to output. And then you've got your file type. So we've set the name, we've got the location. We want to pick the file type here. So if I am going to mastering, which is what I'm assuming I'm going to do, I am going to pick a lossless format. Now in my case, I'm going to pick a WAV file. Uh, you could pick FLAC if you want, um, AIFF, your choice, but I'm going to pick WAV because that's what I do. Okay. Now the sample rate is going to be well, what I'm going to suggest that it should be exactly what you did the song in. So if you have mixed this project in 44.1K, then that's what I'll pick. If you did 48, then pick that. If you did something higher, pick that. So this is assuming you're going to mastering, okay? I'm then going to pick 24-bit because again, I mixed this song with 24-bit. If you did it with 32, 30, 32 bit float, whatever, 16 bit even, if you happen to do that, then pick that. Uh, interleaved just means that it's all together. You know, we're not splitting it. We're not making it mono, anything like that. And then there's just some other settings here that I don't bother with. And once you've set that, then I'm gonna click on export and off it goes. And it will create the file, which I'm just going to abort because I don't actually want the file. But it will create the file and it will store it in this location. You can then go, go and grab that file, uh, which will be called this file here. And, you know, send it to a mastering engineer or import it into your mastering session if you're going to do it yourself. Now, if I was going to just take this out to the car or send it to the client for a quick review or something like that, what I might do is switch over to MPEG-1 layer 3, which is just the long way of actually saying MP3. Uh, again, I'm just going to leave that at 44.1, right? So your options are a bit more limited now because we are using MP3. And you can pick your rate, right? Which is how detailed 
the MP3 is. 320K means it's the best quality, so I might set it to that, but it does mean it's gonna be a bigger file size. I probably wouldn't go below 192. Uh, you're gonna start getting artifacts and it's not gonna sound very good, especially if you get into the review it. If you're not too concerned about the file size, it is still going to be a smaller file size than a WAV file. Uh, but it is going to be the largest sort of file for an mp3 but if you're not too fussed about that I would just do it at 320k that's what I always do and I just output that and it's going to output an mp3 file which I then can send to a client or as I said take it to my car put it on my iPhone whatever just to review it and have a listen back um, you know it's not for mastering as such this is just for a review point now, the other thing that I talked about to prevent customers complaining about volume or anything like that, or even just for yourself, if you want it to be a nice loud volume when you take it to the car, if I was to do this MP3, what I would do is I would go to my mix bus and what I would probably do is put some sort of limiter on the end and it could be anything pick whatever your favorite limiter is and I would probably uh, push the volume that's not going to be my favorite limiter let's just pick something else in this case here I'm going to pick ozone maximizer just because I use it I have it so I might say okay I want the ceiling at zero and I'll push this to get a nice loud volume I'm not going to play the audio because it should get very loud so you might just just set up you know have a preset or something like that which is just say you know a really rough volume increase basically you're just limiting to a volume increase you might turn on a rough dither something like that and then just turn that on output your mp3 you know go f12 output your mp3 then you've got it nice and loud so it sounds like it's been mastered but hasn't been mastered and just make sure that you uh, turn off this plugin or you know remove it or just turn it off if it's something you do constantly I, you could probably just have it sitting here in your template and just have it turned off when you're ready to do the uh, the bounce out for preview turn it on do the mp3 send it to the client but yeah just make sure you turn it off before you go and do your bounce for mastering because you don't want that limiter on for your your file to go to mastering that's for sure so there you go that is how to bounce out your song in cubase pro hopefully uh, translates fairly easily to your own software and you can work that out for your own self for where you need to do it or whatever as i said you know keep in mind whether it's going to mastering going to a client for review all that sort of stuff to how you want to do it and what outputs you want to create. So if you do have any questions about that or any feedback on it, let me know in the comments. I do read all the comments and I'll answer as many of the comments as I possibly can as quickly as I can. So this uh, is pretty much the last video in the theory section in part one. So now we're gonna get on to part two. We're actually gonna take all of these concepts and techniques that we do and I am going to mix my song and hopefully you can follow along and mix your song as well. So at the end of the course, we both have a song that is fully mixed, sounds great, ready for mastering. So we're going to get into part two uh, shortly. So uh, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in part two.